Hello everyone, this is Stephanie here, and we are continuing to talk about safety this week, and this week we're talking about fire safety, which is always important. It's important to have a plan beforehand in the event that you ever need it. So like always, we're gonna try and be as proactive as we can. So one really good resource is just the local fire department. Um, you can actually let them know that your loved one has dementia and see if there's a registry that you can add them to so it's noted that they do have um, dementia and so they can be prepared. So you also want to develop a, an escape plan. And so we have to recognize that our loved ones might not be able to recognize the smell of smoke or associate that with danger. So that's why it's really important that we come up with this plan. You can actually, again, use a local fire department um, or an occupational therapist to help you create this plan. Um, so the, some of the questions you wanna ask yourself are who will help you um, in the event that there's a fire and who will help your loved one? Um, does your loved one use a wheelchair or a walker? So what's the best way for them to leave the house in the event of a fire? Um, also, you wanna determine a safe meeting spot outside of the house so that everyone knows where to meet um, in the event that there's an issue. So we always want to have fire extinguishers on hand. Um, so we want to make sure they're on every floor of the house if it's a multi-story home. Um, but we also want to put them in um, specific rooms that are most likely to catch on fire or to have an issue with that. So that's kitchens, basements, and garages. So those could be a really good place to place the fire extinguishers. We also want to make sure that our house has smoke detectors. So we want them in the bedrooms. Again, we wanna make sure that they're on each floor of the house. Um, and it's important to make sure that at least once a year, you're checking the batteries and testing them. And again, you can ask the fire department to help with that if you need extra assistance. Um, so when it comes to the kitchen, we want to try and discourage our loved ones from cooking alone in the home, especially if they're using the stove, just because it can be quite dangerous um, if we're not there to monitor. Um, and the other thing to think about is, do our, do our loved ones smoke? Do they smoke cigarettes? Um, because we wanna have a plan in place. Um, so first we need to determine if that's something they're able to do alone in the home. Do you trust that they'll know what to do? So a way to do that is to ask ourselves, um, do they know how to put the cigarette out safely? Um, are they likely to know who to call in the event of an emergency, um, such as 911 or yourself? Do they know how to get help if, if need be? So those are questions we wanna ask ourselves if our loved one does smoke. Um, if they do, you can try and create um, a smoking area or a schedule so it's something that can be monitored or it just happens in one place. Um, if you do have a designated space, it's best that it's not near any oxygen masks, um, also not in bedrooms because sheets and linens are um, something that's easy to catch on fire. So uh, one thing you can do is put 911 and emergency numbers either in multiple rooms of the house or by the phone or somewhere where it's easily accessible and easy to view. Um, and just as always, when it comes to preparing for something like this, whether it be a fire or any other crisis, planning ahead can be really, really helpful because when we are in that moment, it's so hard to think of all of these things. So these are ways that you can kind of know you're prepared in the event that it does happen. So I hope this was helpful. Um, I hope you're enjoying this kind of safety series of uh, the discussions that we're having. And if you have any questions or any tips that have worked for you, as always, please comment down below. And until next time, I will see you later. Bye.